Welcome to Leopard Kingflix, your number one online media platform. It is the one-stop shop for information, education, entertainment, encouragement and empowerment, capacity building and transformation through the Word of God. Leopard King Flix is an avalanche of versatile content, a multifaceted buffet of content that you cannot consume in one day. And so we are churning out content for different niches, targeting different groups of our society and community, targeting different aspects of our livelihoods, just making sure that we are all rounded. We are carrying everyone on board, the elderly, the children, the men, the women, and every aspect of our life. And that's what you're gonna get. God bless you. Stick around. Today being a Sunday grants us an auspicious occasion that makes it possible for us to just suck into the presence of the Lord. Enjoy and tally in his presence as we listen to God's holy word. The apostle Paul challenges us that now that we are much older, we must graduate from taking milk and begin not just eating the meat, but chewing the bones. And that is what dimensions of miracles is all about. It is grooming and breeding and incubating the muscles of the spiritual person, the mentality and paradigm of thinking of a Christian so that we stop telling in the place of miracles and doing nothing about it, hoping that economic development is gonna happen, hoping that enlightenment and transformation within community is just gonna happen, hoping that society will transform, become empowered and start making the necessary impact from one generation to another. That is what I represent and that is what this program is all about. Welcome to Gospel Sunday. Sit in, call a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in to Leopard Kingflix and enjoy today's blessings in the Word of God as we preach and demystify the Kingdom of God. May His Kingdom come. Hello everybody and how are you doing? It gives me so much pleasure to welcome you to our program Gospel Sunday with Leopard King. It is a continuing series and the series we are exploring at the moment is Dimensions of Miracles. In our first episode of Dimensions of Miracles, we were able to explore the concept of how you can position yourself for a miracle, how you can identify your product, your service, and your merchandise in your pursuit of miracles. We discussed about capacity building for you to experience the optimum outpouring of your miracle. And finally, we spoke about uh, packaging and executing of your journey of the miraculous and we borrowed this from the book of second kings a story about elisha and a woman who was a wife of the sons of the prophet and this woman was in debt and a creditor was coming to take her sons into slavery as repayment or a as remuneration for the debt that the family owed. And so we learned that the woman positioned herself to meet the prophet Elisha and her product, her service of merchandise was the oil, the little oil that she had at her disposal. And then the prophet Elisha challenged her to build her capacity so that she can have enough of that oil to live on and to sell and get money to repay her debt. And so her oil became Came, her product, her service, and her merchandise. And the prophet still challenged her to build her capacity to have as much oil as uh, possible. And she went out borrowing vessels. In the second episode today, we are discussing the dimension of social capital in the world of the miraculous. So I would like to borrow the concept of social capital in the context of our first episode, that this particular woman could only have a capacity to take in so much oil commensurate to the capacity of her social capital. It was how much jazz, how much capacity that her neighbors had that could offer her the magnitude of her miracle. So if her neighbors could only offer her so much capacity, so much liters of their jazz, then that was the threshold of 
the miracle that she would have experienced. And so I am borrowing for the next and the second episode, which is that it is important for you to develop your community and your surrounding if that's practical, if that is possible. It is also important and valid that you should surround yourself with people who can add value into your capacity. So that is to mean you should not be happy if you are the big boy on campus. You should not be happy if you're the one calling all the shots. You should not be happy if you're the only one in the family who can pay bills because that means everybody depends on you. It also means that if you are out, then everybody else is out. We should endeavor to lift the members of our family, the members of our community, the neighborhood we live in. We should be able to lift them and build the capacity of our social capital so that we can draw back into it. And this brings me the study of the day today, the second episode, is the dimension of miracle that draws from your social capital and from your reputation. In the book of John chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 8, a pool by the name of Bethsaida has many people who are sick, crippled, blind, and lepers and all those, and they are seeking to be healed. So the concept was that the angel of the Lord will come to stir up the water, and upon stirring up the water, then the people who are sick in various illnesses would then dip themselves in the water and they would get well. But those people were not loyal nor patient enough to persist and to be there in time waiting on the angel of the Lord such that when he stirs up the water, they would take the man down into the pool. And so Jesus meets this man and asks him, do you want to be well? This man has become so much cognizant of his poor social capital. He has become cognizant of the fact that there is nobody to put him in the water. Remember, he is paralyzed. He knows it. He has experienced this one too many times until he knows that it is the main thing standing in the way of his miracle. That he prioritizes it to Jesus and says that there is no one to put me in the water. There's no one to lay me down in the water immediately. The angel has stirred up the waters. Jesus finally heals this man, but I want you to introspect, to interrogate and ask yourself how much time he had wasted by the pool because it was possible for him to get well. It was possible for him to get healed. For those 38 years, all he needed was a loyal friend who could hang on, a loyal friend who could believe in him, a loyal friend who could sacrifice for him, a loyal friend who was willing to wait on him until he has presented him and dipped him in the pool of Bethsaida. The miracle happened, but imagine the time wasted, the amount of opportunity that was lost for 38 years. Do not be that person who loses opportunity upon opportunity. Do not be that person who gets passed by with opportunities, with promotions, with the healing, with provision, with employment, with opportunities to advance your career, your studies with opportunities to play your favorite sport, to do your favorite creative art, simply because you did not surround yourself with friends who were willing to be loyal to you, simply because you are not willing to find, to identify, and to hang around friends who could be loyal to you. Of course, there is a question of whether you are also loyal to your friends. So my brothers and sisters, it is important that you take a good elucidation. You do a quick audit of your friends, your family, your neighbors, your colleagues, and ask yourself whether you are surrounded by a pool of people that will be willing to put you down in the water when you need to, or whether you are the type of a person who will remain alone until you normalize talking about the fact that you are abandoned and Serikali needs to say there. Now, let me put proof to this. 
In the book of Mark chapter 2, there is a man who is also sick. He is paralyzed. He is actually a paralytic. And this man has friends four in number who care about him, who are passionate about his situation, who care that he needs to get healing, who care that he must get healed. And when they hear that Jesus is around town, they go where Jesus is. When they get there, they realize that the place is full. It's not possible to get this man where Jesus is so that he can be healed. What do these people People choose to do. They try to walk through the building. It's not possible. The crowds are packed. The place is lit. There's no space for you to move through. What do they decide to do? They take every form of risk for their friend. They take every form of risk for this man. They climb on top of a house. They carry this man atop of the house. They rip off the roof of somebody whom they don't know. They take the risk of pulling out the tiles of a man's house. And then they lower this man down right where Jesus is. They are willing to confront Jesus, take the spotlight away from everybody else and put the spotlight on their man, on their guy. And right there, Jesus healed this man and told him, your sins are forgiven. Two different scenarios, two different people, two different circumstances, but the same sickness, the same situation, the same need. One is alone, wasting away 30 years, 38 in the other one has friends who are willing to do just but anything for him, has friends who are willing to wait up to the last minute, has friends who are willing to push him to his miracle. And so I am asking you, my brother, my sister, who are your friends? Who are your friends? Be the manifestation of your miracle is sometimes, most at times, a function of the friends that you have. You may be surrounding yourself with friends who are in fact going to impede your miracle. You might be in the company of friends who are the ones that are going to make it impossible for you to receive your miracle. You may be giving yourself so much to friends who don't care enough about you. You may be giving your heart to friends, to people, to a support system, whether it is your friends, whether it's your spouse, your siblings, even your parents or your children. At times, we have friends outside of family than we have within family. Sometimes we have people who are willing to have the rain beat them and the fire burn them, willing to give themselves for you, willing to go the distance and to go the mile for you, more than our own family members would, more than our co-workers would, more than sometimes even our spouses would. Just make sure that you are surrounded by people who are willing to burn the midnight oil for you. Make sure that you are surrounded by people who are willing to go the extra mile and pull down the roof for you. Just make sure that you have a people who are willing to wait for you and put you right in the spot where your miracle exists. I believe that we all going to do an audit of our friend zone today. And this has been the dimensions of miracles, a series that still continues. And this was the second episode. All this is Gospel Sunday with Leopard King. And so God bless you until we meet again in the next episode. God bless you. Gospel Sunday with Leopard King comes to you every Sunday at 3 p.m. God bless you. Shalom. I am your host, Leopard King. To donate and to support this program, please go to Lipana Mpesa. Pay bill number is 522 533 Account number is 7661908 I repeat Business number is 522533 And account number is 7661908 Nine. May God bless you so much for donating. May God bless you so much for contributing. May the Lord bless you for giving to the work of God and making it possible for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be preached. I will be happy to reach out with prayer. I will be happy to reach out with encouragement. I will be happy to reach out with a word, a rhema word that is going to transform your life. Tune in next week again on Sunday. And this is Gospel Sunday 
only happening on your number one online media platform, Leopard King Flex. Shalom. Yeah. 